Good morning, Heritage family and friends. Welcome to our virtual worship experience as we gather for the preached word and Holy Communion. This week, be reminded as you confront feelings of isolation, fear, and uncertainty that He is Emmanuel, God with us. When your company talks layoffs, He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. When you feel overwhelmed and want to give up brothers and sisters, he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. He is El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, who will never leave or forsake us. May today's message encourage you and restore the joy of your salvation. Amen. Today, let's get connected during virtual worship. Interact with us at 7.45 a.m. on YouTube live chat and at 10.45 a.m. during the Facebook watch party. Also, visit our website, heritagereston.org, for previous virtual worship experiences and other important announcements. Heritage family, friends, listen, I need to let you know, this is Pastor Sullivan coming to you. There are certain people whose fingerprints are all over this ministry. People who are legendary, who have contributed so much, given so much to the body of Christ, uh, that we often need to take the time and celebrate. This morning, I want you to help me celebrate a woman who is beloved of this congregation, whose fingerprints are all over this ministry. She has served in VBS. She has served as a Sunday school teacher. She has served our children and families at Christmas time through the angel gift tag tree. And listen, y'all, it's her 90th birthday. I, I don't want to get in trouble for sharing the age, but what a blessing it is to be able to celebrate 90 years of God's favor. Who am I talking about? You're probably wondering. That's none other than our beloved sister, Sister Pauline Singletary. So I want even now go in the chat room. I, I'm sure she's going to watch one of these services. Just start posting even now. Happy birthday, Sister Singletary. Happy birthday, Sister Singletary, from my family, from my heart, to your family, and to you, my sister. Happy 90th birthday. We love you. Heritage, it is time to worship God with our tithes and offerings. We know that most of the work of the church happens when service is over. And during this time, it is critical that we have the resources to serve those most in need. As Christians, we are to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. There are multiple ways to give. Visit our homepage and click Give in the upper right-hand corner. Use the Secure Give app or text to give by sending Love Lifts and your dollar amount to 703-337-3347. You may also give through automated banking and by mailing your check to the church. We thank you in advance for your gifts of love. And now we will have a selection from our choir. Lord God, we bless your name today. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory and honor. We just honor you today, God, and we love your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Help me say, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Oh, you are so good. 
Good morning, family. What another beautiful, glorious Sunday morning that the Lord has favored us, graced us to be alive. I pray that you are excited about worship. I pray that this week you have felt the blessing of God's hand over your family, protecting your mind, your thoughts, protecting everything around you. So listen, y'all, let's get in our space where we can commune, where we can connect, where we can be together with God. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, just for this morning, for the ability to open our eyes, to know, God, that you have fashioned this day and that we had absolutely nothing to do with it. That it's only by your invitation that each of us have the opportunity, the ability, and the privilege, God, to be able to bid you good morning. So good morning, Master. Thank you for calling us together in worship. Thank you, God, that you are so powerful that you're not limited to a building made by hand, but that, God, you can reach me even now in the very heart of my home. God, I don't want you to just reach me in this physical place. I want you to reach me, oh God, in this spiritual place. So won't you speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Lord, this is the day where someone might make a decision for you. This is the day, God, that someone on a wrong road might make a U-turn in their life. This is the day, God, that someone sitting on the sidelines might ask that question, what must I do to be saved? So Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us even now. And help us, we pray, in Jesus' name, we give you praise, honor, and glory that all those that love the Lord said amen. Amen. 
Listen, I want to jump into the Word of God this Sunday morning. Get your smartphones out, get your devices. We're going to go back to John chapter 9. Meet me in that sixth verse. John chapter 9, here's the word of the Lord. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore, they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. Beloved, for the time that is ours this morning, I want to preach from the topic, sight unseen, sight unseen. This past Sunday in the live chat, one of the viewers raised a question that has stayed on my mind all week long. A question that deserved more than just a quick response. Because sometimes, beloved, empty cliches don't satisfy the real questions that we wrestle with in life. You know, the things that, that sound right, but, but lack the substance to be able to articulate why we face the things we face. Questions like this, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Or how do I hold on when I'm about to let go? And it's in that vein uh, th that the post from this past Sunday was simple. It went just like this. Can somebody tell me how do I endure? How can I endure? It was in that moment that that person was looking for more from the answer than, than just Jesus won't put more on you than you can bear. No, they wanted a real answer to a real question of how do I endure when, when I'm about to hang up on hope? And beloved, it's that type of question where you can't offer a pre-programmed answer. You can't just throw something quickly at it and simply walk away and as that question stayed on my mind all week long, the, the Lord drew my attention because there was something uh, that we didn't unpack in that John chapter 9. I, I pray you haven't closed your Bibles, that, that if you find yourself asking that question, if you've ever cried out loud, or if you're asking it silently this morning, how can I endure? There is a word from the Lord raised in John chapter 9 that'll help you find the answer. Let me rewind so that we can fast forward this morning. In, in John chapter nine, Jesus meets the blind man, the man who's been blind from birth. Uh, the disciples raise a relevant question. Who's at fault? Who sinned? Is it the man or is it his parents? And Jesus responds, you're all for two disciples that all of this was done. Why? So that the works of God could be revealed. In that sermon, I suggested a few things. I suggested that Jesus teaches us how to have a godly perspective about the process, how to be productive in God's purpose, that Jesus will, will provide a prescription, beloved, where there seems to be no precedent. And I thought I was done. I thought we had found it, we had rounded the final corner and ended the sermon, but not until that chat room question was posted how do I endure? How do I follow the Lord sight unseen? Come on, y'all, I need you to get into this. This is a rich rule this morning that I'm trying to stir, that in verse number six of this text, Jesus spits on the ground. He makes, beloved, a mud mask. He gives the instruction, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Don't miss this. Jesus makes a mud cake, packs it on the man's eyes, 
and says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Deacon Boone, I, I read it so fast, it, it took me a while to get it, that this man is in the Lord's presence. He's felt uh, the Lord's hand covering over his very presence, his body. He's given the command to go to the pool, but here's the problem, that the blind man leaves to go to the pool without receiving his sight. Catch this, the, the blind man still can't see. He's, he's been in the Lord's presence. He's had the Lord's hand covering over his very situation. And after the encounter, he still leaves just as blind as when he showed up at the pool. There's no immediate healing. There's no recovery of sight. As a matter of fact, not only does the man leave blind, he leaves now with a mud cake covering over his blindness. Uh, he's got this compound and we don't, we don't know uh, why Jesus does what he does, uh, but it often leads us to a point where we ask the question, you might not ask it aloud, but somewhere silently we ask it within us, how is it possible to have been in the presence of the Lord, to have felt the Lord's hand on your situation, and yet, beloved, leave the situation just as blind as you came in? You may never have asked that question aloud, but I, I promise you that's what's buried in this text, that you may not be this blind man, but there's been, uh, there's been a moment somewhere in life where each of us have asked the question, Lord, I've been in your presence. Lord, I felt your power, but Lord, how is it possible for me to leave not receiving what I thought I needed? Each of us have come to a moment where we've not always been able to appreciate what the Lord has already done. But the blind man, beloved, is able to endure. And there's a word from the Lord in John chapter 9, uh, beginning in this text that reminds us, that tells us how he was able to make it through. I want to offer it to you real quick that it might bless your heart. The first thing that the blind man teaches us when you're trying to endure, uh, when you're trying to make it through, is that you have to trust in the Lord's word. You got to trust in the Lord's word. I know you're searching for something super deep, and here it is. You got to know how to trust in the Lord's word. Verse number seven says, and he, meaning Jesus, said to the blind man, go. Hear me. If you can't get the fundamentals right, you'll never be able to flex your faith when God is calling you to do so, that there's, there's no deeper question to be asked other than, have you put your trust in the Lord's word? I know that sounds automatic, but when you don't see much movement, when there are no cookie cutter answers, when there are no three points the pastor can lay on you to make a difference in the way you see things, I, if you still want to know how can I endure what it is I've got to go through, sometimes, beloved, you've got to learn how to put the full weight of your concern resting on the Lord's word. I know you and I, we want something instant and immediate, but if you want an answer to the question this morning, if you're looking for a solution, the, the best advice that I can give you comes from the blind man that teaches us that even when I could not see, I, I learned how to put my all on his word. Follow me. There's nothing this blind man can do. He can't see his way out of his own situation. He comes out physically the same way, but spiritually something different has happened because he comes out with the Lord's word. Hear me, faith isn't easy, but the prerequisite of faith is a fundamental trust in the Lord's word. What am I trying to say? Don't let the not yet cancel out what God has already said. Don't let all your questions outweigh the fact that Jesus is still the only answer. You may, can't, you may cannot see it, but don't ever doubt it, beloved. You've got to hold on to what he said, whether it's a loss or a layoff. Maybe it's the next move that you continually try to make unsuccessfully. Don't let a not yet cancel out what the Lord has already said. 
The blind man leaves this encounter with Jesus with a not yet. He leaves, uh, even though he's got a not yet, he, he leaves trusting in what the Lord has already said. Can I give you the Bible this morning? The Bible says in Numbers 23 that God is not a man that, that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Shall he not do it? That he has spoken and he shall make good. That you and I, we can trust in the Lord's word. The blind man teaches us that even when you have not received what you searched out for Jesus to give you, that you and I can, can receive when we learn how to lean and depend, when we learn how to trust in God's word. If you can hold on to that, that if you want to endure, if you want to see the Lord show up in your situation, you and I have got to learn how to trust in his word, then the second point this text is told to teach us is that you and I, we've got to learn how to depend on his directions. Got to learn, beloved, how to depend on his directions. I know you're looking at me saying, Brother Pastor, uh, aren't those two points the same? They're, they're close, but they're not quite the same. Trusting in his word means I have the confidence in what he says. But to depend on his directions means I'm activated to follow his command. Catch this, that, that trusting in his word means I've got the confidence in what he said. But depending on his directions means that I'm activated to follow his command. You can know truth and, and still not follow truth, but the text says that Jesus says to the man, go, and the man went. And here's the thing, he comes back seeing. I'm a witness. You can make it through anything in life. You learn how to depend on the Lord's directions. I want to hover over this place for a moment. Go back and read. Jesus anoints the man's eyes. He sends him away with just his word. The blind man is still blind, but he's not discouraged. He's got to make a choice. Do I give up because what I wanted didn't happen or do I double down and depend on God's directions? Watch this. The Lord says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. From the construction of the sentence, ah, it's clear to see that wherever Jesus and this blind man are, the pool clearly is not. I knew you challenged me, so I checked out John 9 and 7 and in the NKJV, the NRSV, the CEV, and the NIV, and, and I come, came out with the, with the same answer that the, the, they all issue the same command. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And watch this. Each of them, in parentheses, has this watchword which says sent. Come on, don't, don't, come on, lean in with me. That, that each in each version of the Bible, mm, Jesus gives the command to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And in each translation of the Bible, after that command, there is a word in parentheses that simply says sent. That if that's your Bible, I need you to circle sent uh, because Dana and Reggie, well, uh, what that literally means is that there's still a journey, uh, there's still a distance that this brother man still has to go on, that, that there's still something that he's got to make it through even in the blindness, that he's got to learn how to depend on the Lord's direction and not give up. I want to see if I can kind of zoom in on that lens a little bit this morning. Last fall, about 50 of us from uh, the church family took a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. About 50 of us uh, last October had a blessed opportunity to journey together to the Holy Land. We retraced the footsteps of Jesus, uh, walked down that Palm Sunday road. Uh, we even went by the pool of Bethsaida where people were healed just like at the pool of Siloam. The path to the pools are rugged and uneven. Path to the pools are, are steep and at a great distance. Some of them 
from the ground level down to the base of the pool are only five feet, but others of them go down 36 feet deep. And as I was thinking about this text of how the Lord sends this man blind down to the pool, I'm reminded that this man had to cover some tricky terrain. This man had to cover a steep incline. This man had to cover a way where there was no guard or no guardrails, that all he had was to depend on God's directions. Follow me. There were more ways for this to go wrong than there were for this to go right. And yet the man held on despite his blindness, despite the mud that covered his eyes. He held on a little while longer to all he had to hold on to, which was depending on God's directions. And I don't know how you see it this morning, but when you find yourself in a dark place in life, when you find yourself, beloved, ah, where there seems to be no, no end in sight, I need to know, the Lord wants to know, can you depend on his directions to guide you down a path, to get you to a place where you can't get to on your own? The Lord demonstrates through the blind man that if you can depend on my directions, I'll carry you through, through a trail, through a travel, through a pathway you can't get through on your own. And I know you didn't ask for this one, but this one I'm going to give you for free. Ah, uh, That it's hard to follow God when there's been no fellowship with God. It's hard to follow God when there's been no fellowship with God. Some of us want the benefits of relationship, but beloved, if there's been no followship, you'll never appreciate the deep relationship that God wants to provide you and to me. What am I trying to say this morning? I'm trying to say, my brother and my sister, ah, that this relationship came in with a Sunday, Sunday morning worship watch party, that, that the end of this relationship can't be with the grace that you give after you, you've already eaten, halfway eaten your food, that, that my fellowship has to inform my fellowship that, so that I can endure and trust God even when I can't trace him. That, beloved, if you want to know how to follow God, if you want to know how to endure through the battles and, and the storms of life, beloved, you've got to learn how to be in fellowship with God so that you can have fellowship with God. A few weeks back, I celebrated my 40th birthday. The kids blindfolded me, wanted to take me to my birthday surprise. They picked me up out of the basement, made me walk blindfolded upstairs. And at first, I was a little nervous because I didn't know where they would lead me. I didn't know if I could trust myself in their hands. And just at the moment when I doubted, huh, I remembered that I was safe because I have relationship with them so that they'll never let me go. Beloved, all I'm trying to tell you this morning is when you face things, beloved, sight unseen, when you find yourself on a journey and you can't see your way through, you've got to trust, beloved, the one in whom you put your hands in that he's the one that you share relationship with that's well able to carry you through. And I don't know what kind of word you need this morning. I don't know what can excite you to hold on just a little while longer. But beloved, you got to trust in his word. You've got to uh, depend on his directions. And there's one thing this text is finally tailored to teach us that I pray will make a difference, be a blessing in your life. You got to stay committed even when you can't see the reward. You got to stay committed even when you can't see the reward. Let me hasten. John 9, 10, uh, the, the folk gathered around and they could not understand how this man's eyes had been opened to see. They asked the question, after all you've been through, after all of your struggle, after everything you've had to endure, how have you made it? How were your eyes 
finally open to see. And watch this, verse number 11, sight unseen, the man gives the answer. A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, said to me, go to the pool of Siloam. Mm. So I went, I washed, I went, ah, and I received my sight. Somebody, you just got a flashback. because Somewhere the question in your life is how have you made it? How have your eyes been open to see? How did you make it through what others couldn't get through? And the only answer that you and I can give is because I, I held on to the Lord's word. I, I depended on his directions that I stayed committed even when I could not see the reward. And that's the only way I've made it thus far. Then watch this. I need you to study this. Ah, that, that there are two things that happened that the man could do. But there was one thing that happened that was really out of the man's control. Two things the brother could do in his limited power, but there was one thing that only came by the power of the Lord. Ah, he went down to the pool all by himself. He went to the pool and he could have stayed there all day long. He, he washed all by himself, but he could not give his own self the sight. That sight had to come because the Lord had ordained it to be so. And right in that place, the scripture started to preach to me to remind me that you've got to stay committed even when you can't see the reward. There are some things, beloved, I'm trying to tell you, there are some things that only happen because of the favor of the Lord's hand. There are some things, no matter how long you've been blinded, it doesn't matter what you've had to endure. There are some things that when the folk on the sidelines scratch their head trying to figure out how you made it over, that the only answer you can give is because the hand of the Lord rested mightily on my life. That I stayed committed, beloved, even when I could not see the reward. And I, I want to know, can you help me close this, this message together this morning that, that I know I can make it. I, I know that I can endure. I, I know that I shall not be defeated. Why? Because the hand of the Lord has rested mightily on my life. Matter of fact, that's the daily affirmation you need to say every time you look in the mirror that I know I can make it. I, I know I can endure. I know that I shall not be defeated because the hand of the Lord has been mighty on my life. You've got to trust in the Lord. You've got to stay committed to the Lord even when you don't see the reward. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I may not know the news that's been delivered to your doorstep. But might I suggest you can endure ah, because there was one that carried the cross for you and for me. That you can endure because there was the one who, who bled on our behalf that, that you can endure because there's one that sits on the right hand of God the Father that will one day give us our reward. You can endure <sighs> because the hand of the Lord, it never fails. Yes, they hung him high. Yes, they stretched him wide. He, he hung his head and for you and for me, he died. Why? So that you and I can endure. This is not the end. This is just the next move for God to show you, to show me that sight unseen, you can depend on his word. And I pray this morning, beloved, that as you think over your life, that in every situation, you'll trust even when you can't trace him, that the only way to make it sight unseen it's because you know the hand of the Lord will always show up in your life. Come on, let's pray this morning. Wonderful Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the bright and morning star, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to thank you this morning for putting something on the inside that will allow us to endure. We want to praise you, O oh God, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind that, God, 
Even in the midst of the storm, you are the bright and shining star that God, you show up in midnight hours to, to remind me that we're never alone. Lord, this morning, that may be the reassurance somebody watching needs. Lord, that may be the anchor that allows somebody to hold it together when life seems like it's falling apart. Lord, that may be the word to help us get through the next day, the next week, the next season in life. So teach us, God, how to trust in your word. Teach us, God, how to depend on your directions. Teach us how to stay committed ah, when we have not seen the reward. Because you are a great and a faithful God, we place our lives in your hand. This is our prayer prayed in faith in Jesus' name. Let the body of Christ say amen. This morning, don't log off too quickly. I need you to hang in there with us just for a little while longer because maybe that's been the question on the table of your heart. Lord, how can I endure? Maybe you found yourself in a place of isolation, in a place uh, with more questions than answers, in a place well, you're just not sure. Beloved, remember what we said this morning. Where there is no fellowship, there can be no fellowship. But Jesus bled and died on the cross that you and I might have relationship. It's too important for you to just be alone, too important for you to live anonymous and alone. The Bible is clear and it's, it makes it so simple that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You are saved. This morning, all you have to do is call out, I believe. I believe. You may be searching for a church home may have never received the gift of salvation. You may have received the gift of salvation, but some, somewhere along the way fell off the path. All we need you to do, all I'm asking, all the Lord's asking you to do this morning, send us an email to lovelifts at heritagereston.org. In that subject line, just type, I believe. Give us a way to get in contact with you. We'll walk through this way together. God bless you. God keep you. May God's hand always hover around you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Until next week, amen. Beloved, we've come to that moment on the first Sunday where we celebrate one of the two ordinances of our faith. The first being believer's baptism. The second being the Lord's Supper. This is a meal that is shared amongst believers, those that have professed Christ as Savior. So I pray that as we gather virtually around our tables with our family, in the presence of the Lord our God, that even now you would Assemble yourselves. Come, beloved. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, how we bless your name on this morning. It's time, O oh God, when we share in the memorial meal. Time of remembrance. That perfect sacrifice you gave through your darling son, Jesus Christ. So that all of my sins could be washed away. This morning, I confess before you and you alone, Lord, that there are things that I have done that I should not have done. There are things I did not do that you told me to do. And God, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I thank you for loving me enough to give the gift of eternal life 
through your son, Jesus Christ. So I ask you for forgiveness this morning. I ask that you create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within. Help me, Lord Jesus, that in the taking of bread and the sharing of cup, each of us might be remembered the depth of your love for us. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. However you are able this morning, I pray that you use this time to focus in on the sanctity of the table. The table is where meals are shared, relationships are fed, lessons are taught. Around that table, Jesus met with his disciples to teach them a lesson in love, a lesson in serving, a lesson that they would never forget for the rest of their lives. I'm reminded of the scripture Jesus says to Peter and John, when you enter into a city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And you shall say unto the good man of the house, where is the guest chamber? And he shall show you a large upper room. There, make ready. And I know it feels different because we're not together in the sanctuary, but if you would actually look at the text, they were gathered in a home in an upper room around the table. And so wherever the presence of the Lord, wherever you are this morning, the presence of the Lord is right there. So come on, beloved. Let's, let's affirm our faith in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For I have received of the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Come on, let's, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that hung on a cross, bruised, marred, mangled for you and for me. Take, eat ye all of it. like manner, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant made in my blood. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Take, drink ye all of Join in with me for a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, God, that the story doesn't end in death, but it ends in the newness of life. We pray, God, that as we have shared in the breaking of bread, in the lifting of cup together on this day, that you would remind us that we are new in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, all things have become new. Help us to walk in your way, in your love, and in faith. Thank you, God, for what you did on Calvary's cross for a sinner like me. And help us, we pray, to lift high your praise on the earth as we one day shall do in heaven. This is our prayer prayed in faith, sealed by the blood of Jesus for the remission of all of our sins. Let those that love the Lord say amen. Amen. I pray that you have had a blessed time sharing communion together with your families in your house in the Lord's presence. Take a picture even of your communion set up share it with us, post it, so that we can together let the world know that the work of the church is unstoppable. This is Pastor Sullivan, loving you with the love of the Lord until we meet again next week. God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us, and let's stay connected. Join us for the Hour of Power on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and daily for morning prayer. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Have a blessed week.